This amazing new technology can take iPhone videos or any other 2D video and turn it into 3D structures and geometry. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. We kick off today with an incredible new advance in AI for 3D modeling called Neuralangelo. Dr. Jim Fan tweeted yesterday, to give you a sense of how fast AI for 3D modeling is advancing, the field went from the left, original Nerf reconstructed mesh, to right, Neuralangelo, in three years. Transporting reality into high fidelity simulation is no longer a pipe dream. Now you might have heard me talk about Nerfs or neural radiance fields before. This is a technology that allows you to convert two-dimensional video into a three-dimensional representation. The video that's on the screen came from Nick St. Pierre shooting a 2D video with his iPhone and then turning it into a Nerf with Luma Labs. Neuralangelo is a new approach in that space from NVIDIA that takes two-dimensional video representations of a space or an object and turns them into incredibly detailed 3D models. Bilawal Sidhu explains it, calling it photogrammetry on steroids. Now, Bilawal gives a little bit of background around the technology that this is descended from as well. He writes, What the heck is this photogrammetry thing NVIDIA is supercharging with AI? TLDR, photogrammetry, is the art and science of measuring stuff in the real world using images and other sensors, e.g. LiDAR. I love these 3D point cloud representations because they really capture the essence of a place. And how this is created is with the art and science of photogrammetry. Essentially, you take a lot of photos, 334 in fact, and I just took this with a 7 III camera with a pretty wide lens. If you look at the bottom, I kind of follow these structure, circular, grid-like patterns to essentially capture observations of the place. Mentally, what I'm thinking about is like splattering the world with photons. So I'm painting the world with these photons every photo I take, and I want to get this sort of homogenous sampling of the scene, something that's at least palatable and still produces awesome results. I kind of think of it like a reverse jigsaw puzzle. You want to break up the world into these discrete chunks that you can easily put back and snap back together. And that's essentially what the software does. The software has gotten so good lately that you barely need to do any manual tie points or anything like that. He goes on. NVIDIA's new AI model is basically like photogrammetry on steroids. Why? Traditional photogrammetry can't handle repetitive structures, textureless surfaces, or strong color variations. But Neuralangelo blends the tech behind instant neural radiance fields to capture every detail imaginable. Thus far, NERFs and photogrammetry have served different purposes. NERFs are for stunning visualizations, think fly-throughs, but lack surface detail when turned into 3D meshes. Photogrammetry is great for surface reconstruction, think measuring stuff, but not always visually appealing. Neuralangelo is the game changer we've been waiting for. Its approach delivers the best of both worlds by bridging the gap between visuals and surface reconstruction. In what I think is a great analogy, he compares it to sculpting in 3D. Basically, first, this rough 3D scene emerges, and just like a sculptor chisels a block, refining it bit by bit, the details slowly start to come out. Now, that famous Michelangelo invocation that he doesn't actually sculpt things per se, but just discovers what's already in the marble, might be part of the inspiration to call this Neuralangelo. Bilawal concludes, in summary, Neuralangelo represents a significant advance, achieving both realistic visuals and finely detailed 3D models that stay true to surfaces. So let's talk applications. Obviously, there is a huge potential for gaming and metaverse and 3D world applications, which I think is going to do nothing but increase in importance over the next couple years. But then there's also the ability to create digital twins of real world objects that has a number of different applications as well. All in all, this is definitely today's example of Arthur C. Clarke's famous quote that sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Next up, let's check in on AI in China. A couple announcements on that front. 
First of all, Chinese tech giant Baidu is rolling out a 1 billion yuan or around $145 million AI fund. In addition to that, the company is launching a competition for developers to build applications on its custom LLM, which is called Ernie. Speaking of custom Chinese LLMs, Chinese giant Alibaba is also putting ChatGPT-like AI experiences built on its custom LLM into its meeting and messaging apps. But of course, it's not just Chinese companies who are racing to integrate AI into basically every enterprise experience. Asana, the team software, has now introduced Asana Intelligence. Asana's goal is to use AI to help teams make decisions faster, such as getting automatic recommendations that can remove bottlenecks or how to reallocate resources, as well as think about resource management in a different and more automated kind of way. Now, more interesting to me than just the fact that Asana had launched these tools was that alongside it, they also published their five guiding principles for human-centered AI. These are the principles they say will guide everything that they do with AI, and I wonder to what extent this becomes a trend for other companies who introduce AI features as well. Asana's five principles include one, AI should help people achieve their goals. Two, we design for human and AI teams. Three, people are accountable for their decisions. Four, we're committed to safety in the short and long run. And five, we promote transparency in practice and in product. Now to me, the thing that's interesting is less the specifics, although they seem like fine principles, and more the idea that as the policy and regulatory discussion around AI grows, will we see companies articulate these sort of voluntary ethical principles when it comes to their approaches to AI? Microsoft made yet another AI announcement. They're now offering their designer service as part of their team suite. And in so doing, they are going directly after tools like Canva and Figma by putting AI-generated design directly into their core feature set. Now, all that said, while most companies are racing to figure out how they could integrate AI features, some companies are availing themselves of the courts to stop other people from using AI features. Getty has filed another lawsuit against Stability AI. The first one came in the U.S. and basically accused Stability AI's stable diffusion of training its model on Getty's 12 million proprietary images without any sort of permission or payment. Stability AI asked a court to throw that suit out last month, and now Getty has filed a second suit, this time in the UK. They're asking a UK judge to prohibit Stability AI from offering products in the country because of their use of Getty's images for training. You'll remember yesterday we talked about how Japan has said that they will not enforce copyright around this type of AI training, but that's not necessarily the policy in places like the US and the UK. Finally, Time's forthcoming issues cover story is all about AI risk. The big blaring red cover reads the end of humanity. How real is the risk? If you listen on Sunday, I'll be reading a couple of the pieces from that issue, but for now, it's an interesting marker of how the public discourse has evolved. That's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share, as well as turn on those notifications so you don't miss an episode. And I'll be back with the main AI Breakdown in just a little bit.